You are watching a KTVB News Group special presentation. Innovative Educators, presented by CapEd Credit Union. Another school year is in the books. This one much more normal than the previous two, if you know what I mean. Once again, our teachers went above and beyond to connect with their kids and help them soak up the subject matter. One put his own twist on bodybuilding. Three teamed up to put their own spin on education. And still another went cosmic for his classes. So many showing the sky may not be the limit to learning. Today, we celebrate them. It's the 2021-2022 Innovative Educators Special. And welcome to this Innovative Educators Special. I'm Doug Petcash. Over the past school year, we featured nearly 30 educators who found their own unique ways to engage, excite, and enrich their students. I wish we had time today to honor all of them, but we will give you a good sample of these shining examples of teaching excellence. You can find all of their stories under the Innovative Educator tab on KTVB.com. Now, we begin at the beginning of the past school year. In the Boise School District, some students are growing a garden that's returning the favor. It's helping them grow, too. Of course, with a lot of nurturing from their amazing teacher. In this good-sized garden grows a great bounty of fruits, veggies, and flowers. Brussels sprouts, kale, amaranth, pears, potatoes, carrots, peppers, violas, which are edible. A long list from A to at least W. Watermelon. The garden graces the grounds outside the Ascent Program building in the Boise School District. Special education teacher Lorian Oberlander explains the key aspect of Ascent. It's for kids who have had behavioral challenges in a larger school environment, and so it's an environment where they get a little more one-on-one -on -one attention that they really need. And the kids give a lot of attention to the garden. Watering, pruning. Well, so I pruned them to make it to where they don't stick out in the aisle like this one. Digging. And what's your favorite part of this? Uh, probably uh, the digging and the laying down the compost for the, for the bed. And eating. Let me see if, I, if you can find a really little, yeah. really orange one. Those are so good. Like try right there. That one? Mm -hmm. The garden is a lovely place where you can pick fruit and vegetables and take it home. Oberlander has been tending the garden and nurturing students in it since 2008. At Ascent, like these kids have really struggled in their past and I want school to be a place that brings them light and joy and feel safe. The garden is a seed sanctuary and a kid sanctuary. Yeah, that it's a safe place if you like want to come out here and like sniff flowers or do gardening work, you can do it. Or eat grapes. Or eat grapes or eat tomatoes or anything, you can do it. I enjoy the peacefulness and the quiet. Honestly, it's really pleasant, though in the winter times it's really rough. Oberlander digs into the science too. Things like plant bacteria, the properties of soil, and the importance of pollinators. So we like to pl plant these uh, sing, sing carrots, or whatever they are, to make sure that the pollinators can get enough honey to protect their hives. As the plants grow, the students' self-esteem grows, and so does their real-life resume-building skill set. They are harvesting plants, they are planting plants, they are cooking food, they are cleaning up from food, and they are serving people the food that they make. And that's just so many skills right there. Ultimately, Oberlander sees many students bloom. And I've seen like the most amazing transformations of quiet, withdrawn kids in the classroom come into the garden and have tremendous leadership. Because of her leadership, Lorian Oberlander. Who doesn't like tomatoes? Innovative educator. The Ascent program is for 7th to 12th graders. By the way, the food is eaten in the school by the students. They do a lot of cooking with it, and they can also take some of it home. At Richard McKenna Charter High School in Mountain Home, science teacher Nick Triska put a bug in his students' ears about the insects that live around them. Triska led his students through a class project called the Insects of Elmore County. Over four weeks, the students collected and identified 87 unique species of insects in the Mountain Home area. The project allowed them to put the impact of insects under the microscope. You know, this directly affects their future. You know, the, the health of the pollinators and the health of the insect community 
um, doesn't just affect the insects, it affects, you know, us and it affects, you know, our economy and so many different things. The students uploaded the information to their page on the iNaturalist website. Triska says that helps those in the scientific community by providing them with information on what insects are where. Now we're off to Wendell Middle School, just west of Twin Falls. Teacher Elizabeth Pope is bringing history to life for her students with the Wendell Middle School Wax Museum. The person is frozen in time like a museum exhibit, and when they put push the button, the person comes to life. Push. Howdy, y'all. I'm Dolly Parton. I was born in 1946. The eighth grade wax figures bring famous historical figures to life, such as Dolly Parton. Ben Franklin, Susan B. Anthony, and Rosie the Riveter, among others, have made appearances at past wax museums Pope spearheaded when she worked in other Idaho schools. She keeps bringing it back because she believes the kids get so much out of it. So from the researching to the, the, the setting up to the costume creation to the performance, um, it's, it, they learn a lot that's not just out of a book. And Pope says another thing she loves about the Wax Museum is that it gives the kids an element of theater they may not have experienced before. A West Ada PE teacher's ultimate goal is to motivate his students to be active for their entire time on this green earth. And to do that, his lessons sometimes go cosmic. Black light, music, and lighted lanes. Bowling pins, glow-in-the-dark markers, and a whole bunch of bright-eyed bowlers. Fill the gym at Galileo STEM Academy in Eagle. In a really fun, dynamic, um, exciting, energetic activity with cosmic bowling. Yes, cosmic bowling. Their, their faces, their expressions, their, their screams, and their excitement, they could not wait to play. PE teacher Tim Fullwood is the brains behind the bowling. And I'm a big kid myself, so I love to have play and I love to have fun, and I want the kids to have a, have a blast as they're participating. Cosmic Bowling was the grand finale of a weeks-long lesson on the mechanics and skills of underhand rolling. It falls under Fullwood's philosophy of playing with a purpose. We're teaching them skills, um, movement knowledge, and they're utilizing those skills in the play activity, whatever it is. And so um, while they're thinking they're just playing, they're actually practicing and learning the skills and, and gaining knowledge. He uses the philosophy in all of his lessons, like drum fit. The kids played drums while on exercise balls to work on rhythmic skills. It was a hit last year. So was hitting or striking balloons to learn volleyball skills. The young kids don't quite have the dexterity yet and the hand-eye coordination for the real volleyballs, and so we break out the balloons. Whether they roll a strike, a spare, or a gutter ball, Fullwood hopes activities like cosmic bowling help his students fall in love with fitness. I want them to, throughout their lifetime, remember how fun it is to actually do an underhand roll and go bowling and, and get active and get moving. Tim Fullwood. I want to foster, as much as I can, a love of movement. Innovative educator. Mr. Fullwood says he's always looking for new activities for his lessons so he can keep things fresh for the kids. At Idaho Arts Charter School in Nampa, the dance students learn new steps, while the visual arts students work up new works of art, and the Spanish class kids produce new poetry. Different disciplines creating in collaboration. Dance teacher Kelly Brown calls the project the Guernica Collaboration. It sprang from this 1937 Pablo Picasso painting, his anti-war masterpiece titled Guernica. So on my part with the dance program, we are looking at Basque culture because Guernica is a Basque city that was bombed during World War II, um, that the painting is based off that bombing. Brown says the Basque dancing and the Spanish poetry went hand in hand with the paintings or graphic designs the art students created around ideas of what affects us as humans. She believes projects like this are a great way to show them what they're capable of through collaboration or on their own. Whether they continue art past high school, that they individually can have an impact on um, issues that they see in their world. And if this is one venue for them to be able to do that, that's really exciting to provide that for them. A first grade teacher in Homedale is giving her students and their school pledge a whole new meaning. Shira Matsuzawa tells us about Rebecca Jenkins, who's teaching her kids to be inclusive one sign at a time. At Homedale Elementary. 
the first graders in Rebecca Jenkins' class are getting a lot of attention, not for what they're saying out loud, but for what they're signing. This is the Homedale Elementary Pledge. The students pledge to be respectful. I will show respect for people, my school, and myself. As well as responsible and safe. It just kind of helps them stick it in their brain. Rebecca taught her students to sign the school pledge for the first time last year, and then again this year. I know that kinetically, like, students learn better when they're able to put emotion to something. And uh, so when we, when we have this Trojan Pledge, instead of just reciting it. She learned some sign language when she taught developmental preschool, but she also had a personal experience with it. One of my first years uh, teaching, I had a student who, uh, her mom was uh, deaf, and so we, uh, she taught me a little bit of signing. At the beginning of the year, we talk about what does that mean to be responsible, and then, okay, so this is responsible. That's putting that weight on, and then what does it mean to be um, respectful? Okay, respect. This is a sign for respect, so we're going to, um, you know, whisper and, and be respectful. And the first graders love it. They're like it's so excited about it because they're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. They love it. They love being able to uh, do the sign language. Rebecca even incorporated sign language into other lessons. They'll sign um, the alphabet. In the lunch line, we'll do, um, I'll have them sign um, counting up to 10 and back down. And remember that student who sparked Rebecca's interest in teaching sign language in class? Her little sister is now in my class this year. And so it's really fun to see that same um, family and then having those same signs and, and different things like that in the class. It's a lot of fun. The most rewarding part, Rebecca knows with each sign, her students are signing their way to being more open-minded and having a better understanding that we are all different. Making them more aware that it that there are other people in the world in other ways, um, not just us speaking to one another. There's other ways to communicate. And that's exactly what she's doing. Rebecca Jenkins, Innovative Educator. In case you're wondering what was behind Rebecca in the video, it's actually a sound wall. It's meant to help kids learn how to spell better. Still to come on our Innovative Educators special, we go to the McCall Donnelly School District where the beats are bumping and the pedals are pumping. Students there are getting to work out while working on their lessons. And welcome back to our Innovative Educators special. Now we're heading to the McCall Donnelly School District where these next Innovative Educators are putting their own spin on education. With the music bumping, the pedals are pumping at Payette Lakes Middle School in McCall. There are so many kids that just need to move, that middle schoolers need to move. And boy are they moving since the Viking School of Spin started earlier this fall. I really like how excited they are. Language arts teacher Amanda Hathaway, reading teacher Jacqueline Hengler, and physical education teacher Casey Wheeler are the driving force behind it. They're all avid spin bike riders and certified spin bike instructors. I like the the fact that the spin bikes are a lifetime sport. They came up with and followed through on the idea as they moved from teaching from home because of the pandemic to a hybrid model and then back to in person. Kids were stressed. They weren't getting physical activity as much as they wanted to. And we needed a place for them to feel like they could do something new and exciting and have a positive moment in all of the COVID world. They applied for and received grants from the McCall Donnelly Education Foundation and Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation to buy 20 spin bikes with heart rate monitors, iPads, and a fitness program that includes different bike races and competitions. Casey Wheeler describes the kids trying to keep up with their digital instructor. And they were all just like, hyper focused They're If they weren't on the bike, they were cheering their friends on like, hey, ratchet down the resistance a little bit. And you could just see the or the energy in the gym was really palpable. The music isn't always bumping when the kids are on the bikes. They can also listen to audiobooks on the iPads while spinning. That's perfect in Jacqueline Hengler's reading class. It was eerily silent in my room because they were just listening and writing and they were like dripping sweat and it was really fun to see. The teachers love that the spin bikes can be moved easily from the gym to different rooms and that they can be adjusted to fit each student. And that's the beauty about the spin bikes is 
And why we decided to do it was it meets the needs of every individual kid yeah. where they're at. I think our biggest mission with the spin bikes was to give kids an opportunity to learn how to manage their own fitness and how to find passion to do something that just makes them overall healthy. And as you can see in this time-lapse video, the whole staff has been along for the ride. I want to say like almost everybody came down and it only took us 45 minutes to put all we the bikes together. <laughs> all to give the students a different spin on exercise and education. I would like the kids just to see the power of group fitness. It's, it's fun to work out with friends. Something these three friends know all about. They're innovative educators. The kids can ride the bikes in gym class, in regular classes, like the reading class, between classes and after school. The teachers say it gives the students a chance to move their legs, do some physical activity, and then be able to focus on their classwork. The gym at Sacagawea Elementary School in Caldwell is abuzz with activity and energy as the kindergarten kids conquer an obstacle course. But this course incorporates a different kind of obstacle to overcome, the alphabet. PE teacher Andy Dela Cruz combines PE with the ABCs. He came up with a concept that comes into play in alphabet tag. The kids learn letters and letter combos. We start off level one with the letter C H. Then we move level two with the letter and sound. Ch Ch and then level three, letter sound and a word that starts with that letter. Ch they love it. Constantly asking for alphabet tag all the time. And Dela Cruz says he wanted to do something to help close the learning gap caused by the COVID pandemic while getting the kids moving more. Another innovative educator has her own unique way of teaching her students their ABCs. Cassie Canis makes the alphabet fashionable for her students. Each day, the Trailwind Elementary School kindergarten teacher dressed up as the letter of the day. For example, she was an X-ray for X day, an octopus optometrist for O day, and a ladybug for L day. I like colored big spots on my shirt and wore a tutu and like striped stockings and I was feeling very ladybuggish. And they were like, where are your wings? And one of the skills that we want the kids to have is to on site know all of the letters and the letter sounds that come with them. Now, to put an exclamation point on the letter lessons, the kids held a fashion show. They decorated paper vests with their assigned letter and all the things they could think of that have that letter sound. For years, a mountain home teacher has been teaching her first graders the importance of respecting and recognizing our veterans and active duty military members. For that work, East Elementary School first grade teacher Lisa Russell was named the Veterans of Foreign Wars National Teacher of the Year. She passes on her appreciation for our servicemen and women through some fun projects, such as when the kids help prepare poppies for veterans and when they stuff cookie bags for deployed airmen. Russell also holds a first grade career day with several different professions, including the military. And we want to recognize what they do, but we also want the kids to understand here's how um, STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math play into your, the roles of what's happening in our military. Russell's students also learn American flag etiquette from veterans. A teacher at the Ambrose School in Meridian wants his students to be able to wrap their brains around some pretty complicated coursework in human biology. So he's teaching them how to be bodybuilders. Your shoulder bones connected to your neck bone and your neck bones connected to your head bone. We all know that, but... I wanted to do something that was a little different. How do the muscles make your bones move? So you're not going to make kids memorize 650 muscle names, um, just the basics. So the Ambrose School 11th and 12th grade human biology teacher, Ken Hosier, secured these small skeletons for his student body. And then they could actually sculpt muscles and assemble the muscles and then even cut carve in a little fascicle so they see the direction of the muscles and understand the action of the muscles. Fast fact, a fascicle is a bundle of structures such as muscle fibers. Hosier bought the skeletons, clay, and sculpting materials with a $700 CapEd Credit Union grant. The skeleton key here is that the students can work hands-on in 3D to really grasp the concepts. You want to make things as tangible um, for students as possible, and so you want to look for ways that gets them out of the just rote memorization and into diving into the content, or actually, sorry, seeing the applicability of the content. He says it's really helping them flex their mental muscle, and it's more fun. 
the smiles on the students' faces, um, it was just amazing to watch them see that sense of joy as they're trying to carve out the different muscles. For now, the skeletons are back in Hozier's closet, but he looks forward to pulling them out again for the next round of students to build on their body of knowledge. I think all teachers will talk about the aha moments, seeing that light bulb come on for students. I really like that interaction and to, you know, create a sense of wonder in my students, because for me, I feel like when you create that sense of wonder, that eventually leads to wisdom. It's no wonder why Ken Hozier is an innovative educator. And Mr. Hozier is actually the first teacher to be recognized as an innovative educator twice. We featured him in December of 2018 for a lesson he did using mini cars and special tracks to teach his students the physics of car crashes. More innovative educators when we come back. The Great Outdoors is the classroom for our final Innovative Educator on this Innovative Educator special. She opens up the world of critters, creatures, crustaceans, and other cool creations of nature to her students. I caught up with her at the MK Nature Center in Boise. So when I saw it, it was like, gotta go get it. That it being beaver scat. Sarah Foscht is so passionate about her job, she jumped at the chance to scoop the poop from the Boise River. Yeah, I have a scat collection. I have uh, many animals. Uh, they're in bags and jars and bins. Uh, people bring me the scat. I collect it when I'm on vacation because uh, I have a scat and tracks program. Fosht has been a wildlife educator at the MK Nature Center in Boise. We're going to be collecting things that don't have backbones, critters, animals. For 14 years. I love teaching about nature. I'm very passionate about nature. I'm very excited about it. And I love sharing that with other people. And then I guess related to that is seeing their reaction. Something. What's this? I don't know what the heck it is. Reactions like those from the kids in her class in the Creek program. Did you find a fish? Yeah, we found this little guy right here. Yay! How did you find him? We were kicking around and then we found, we just saw something fly into our net. So it's just a fun experience in the water, but really we're looking for insects. What insects live underwater? What is, why are they in there? Like, I never thought insects lived underwater. They're feeding the fish. Um, you know, the eagles are feeding on the fish. That's the whole food chain. She likes to immerse the kids in the science of the stream, such as what crayfish like to eat. Uh, you put some bait in one of our viewing windows, and really within like 45 seconds, crayfish are crawling out of the rocks. It turns out crayfish crave? Uh, cat food. Really? Yeah. And what beavers like to build. The students build mini beaver dams using only what a beaver would use. Sticks, mud, leaves, and rocks. Right before you test the dam and you pour the water in is that moment where you can remind them, you know, why the dam is so important in nature. It's holding water in the mountains. It's creating habitat. Like the water may not be deep, but the lessons are. And it's fun to find new things in the flow. I hear kids saying, this is the best day of my life, you know, or this is the best field trip ever. And, and they're having a great time and they're going to talk about it when they go home and they're going to remember next time they go to a creek to turn over a rock. Leaving no stone unturned on her mission to expose others to the wonders of nature. Sarah Fosht. You know, touching a worm, getting up close to a fish. Those are, those are beginning experiences. Um, that could get you later down the road to more in-depth experiences with wildlife. Innovative educator. And thank you to all of our incredible teachers who always bring so much passion to their profession and strive to give their students the best possible leg up.